Hi, Facebook friends. Helen Arcantu here, CEO of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. So happy to have some time with you on this Friday and grateful to end this week together um, and to end this week with these two wonderful women and to be together today on this important day of the Juneteenth. So thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for having us. Thank you. Um, as those of you watching know, YWTV was created to keep us social during social distancing and keep us connected and be having important conversations that will educate or inspire us and kind of, um, you know, lift us through this time. Um, it's also an opportunity for us to connect with people in our community that are doing amazing, amazing things. And um, today, as we shared, happens to be uh, the Juneteenth. And um, it's the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. And although it's not a federal holiday, 46 states and the District of Columbia recognize it. And we are hoping that it gets to the point of being a federal holiday um, sooner than later, for sure. Yep. Um, we know that um, because of so many recent Black Lives Matter protests and our obviously the um, country coming together to support our black Americans. We are really um, are pushing and we are happy to see that so many companies have started to designate the Juneteenth as a paid holiday. And we encourage more companies to take on that as well. Um, our organization of the YWC of Northern New Jersey is committed to aligning with advocates and racially uh, minded organizations that are committed to making an impact that will benefit others. And um, you know, with that, it's so fitting to be having this discussion today with these wonderful women about their new book, but have them here today. So I'm so proud and honored to have Theodora Lacey with us, who I consider to be a national treasure. Um, <laughs> and so, so grateful to meet um, her granddaughter, who I've heard about over the years, um, Tori Murphy, and have them both with us this afternoon to talk about their new book called The Grocery Game. Um, and I just want to say personally, it's been my absolute privilege to um, meet Theodora through my work at the YWCA. Um, she is, has uh, and witnessed her lifelong commitment to the work of racial justice. Um, she, we designated an award in her name at the YWCA um, many years ago, back in 2014. Um, and, you know, we're so lucky to have her in our community. Um, she makes all the work that she's done has really made our world a better place for sure. Um, she was born in Montgomery, Alabama. She's a pioneer of the civil rights struggle and she worked closely with Dr. King during the Montgomery bus boycott. She is a retired um, and well-loved um, science <laughs> teacher in the Teaneck Public Schools system. And she was instrumental in desegregating that system. In 2014, she was honored, as I said, with the Racial Justice Award. Um, and then from there, we uh, named it um, after her for all those that have come since. Um, she, uh, you know, is the mother of four, the grandmother to 10, and the great grandmother to 11. Um, and she is an avid reader. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing about this experience of writing a book with your granddaughter. Thank you so much, Helen. It is always a pleasure to be with you. And I can say firsthand that I know the kind of work that you're doing at the Y, and I'm so appreciative to be a part of it. Well, as I said, you inspire me, and uh, I learn from you, and i um, humbled and grateful that you're joining us. And so wonderful to finally, I've, I've met your son, but I'm one of your children, I should say, but I'm so, so happy to finally meet your granddaughter, Tori, um, who was born and raised in South Orange, New Jersey. Um, she attended Elon University, where she attained her bachelor's in early childhood education. Tori is currently in graduate school at Teachers College and she's studying to get her master's in sociology and education. She's a preschool teacher in New York City, and she cares deeply about culturally responsive teaching. Um, Tori has always loved children's books and thoroughly enjoyed creating this one with her grandma. Yeah. So ladies, <laughs> tell us about this book. There's so much more to talk about, but let's start with the book. Tell us about this book. Yeah, how did yeah. you get this idea, and how did you develop the storyline around it? 
So the idea started about two years ago. My grandma came to me and said, we need to make a children's book. We can do it. We can write it together. And I love the idea. I wanted to do it, but I didn't know where we were going to take the story that we had and how we were going to get it out into the world. And so um, we worked together to kind of create the story of Maya and the grandmother going to the grocery store and asking questions about the world. But because I didn't have any kind of connections to the publishing world, I we just kind of sat with it for a while up until two classmates of ours or mine um, created their publishing company and we got in touch. That's wonderful. <laughs> Being a grandma is one of my delights. Uh, Tori and I have been on many adventures together. And because I've had the opportunity to watch her grow and develop, I knew from a young child how creative she was and how well she worked with other people. So I wanted to just record our being together. Well, I, I can't imagine a, 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 a more powerful legacy for the two of you to have that you've created this, this, this work of art together. Um, so Tori, tell us your publishing company, Stern Stories, um, uh, which is, I guess, was part. Of, tell us about that. Tell us about your publishing company and and you know how you created that. Yeah. So two of my classmates, Kyle and Kelsey, created it um, a year ago, and the the idea of it behind Stern Stories is because they were looking at the publishing world and thought that there were a lot of the same voices and same books, um, same stories being represented. And so they wanted to stir things up. So that's why the Stirred Stories name. Love that. And then um, Kyle posted on Facebook when they made it and said, we're looking for stories, um, underrepresented narratives. And on a whim, I kind of was like, okay, let's just send over what we've been thinking about. And then we became the first book that they published. Wow. Well, that's that's I, I love their concept around stirred stories and how wonderful that you get to be the first to be part of it. So what was the experience of launching this book with them like? It was a, a really amazing experience. It was the first book for them, um, publishing our first book, writing. Um, quickly, they found an amazing illustrator um, named Megan, who lives in San Francisco and took our words and really brought them to life through her. Um, illustrations and so we just all kept in contact getting um, putting it all together. We wanted to write just an ordinary story about ordinary people doing everyday things and appreciating the world we live in, the food we eat, the beauty of our environment and learning to live together as a diverse group of people and of course Tori is sometimes shy and chilly. I had thought that she would be the illustrator, but we yield this wonderful person who's illustrating the story. So one day you may see some of her illustrations. Maybe. As well. <laughs> well, you know, there's there needs to be a follow up book, doesn't there? Yeah. <laughs> In the works. In the works. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. So I know that the book is currently available free online through www.stirredstories.com and we'll have the link here for anyone who wants to access it for sure. Um, when is the print uh, release expected? So um, pandemic as it delayed a lot of things also delayed the print printing of the book. Um, and so the launch was supposed to be through bookstores and you know not social distancing. So we flipped it and decided that it was a great opportunity to launch it online instead. And um, as a preschool teacher for these 10 weeks that I was teaching online, using online books has been really helpful to teach um, my students. And so because of that, things were a little bit delayed, but there will be um, a pre-order for the book starting in July. Wonderful. Um, so Obviously, this was a first um, endeavor for the two of you to write this book together. Um, I can't imagine, you know, again, a more important time for a book like this to come out. Um, it really brings the value of variety and diversity, you know, right to the forefront. And we know that that's more important than ever right now. Mm -hmm. So what other projects do you two have planned? Well, Tori, as she said, is working on a master's 
at Columbia, so she's quite busy <laughs> and also teaching. But we do plan to collaborate in the future together. We love doing things together. She can tell us our most recent adventures. Yes, we've been baking a lot because we've been quarantined together. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe a cookbook? Maybe a cookbook. <laughs> I think that um, the grocery game really lends itself to more stories with Maya and the grandma going to different places and asking questions about the world. So, um, yeah, I think. Uh, Tora really gave much carrot to the book uh, in selecting Maya as being focused. Can you tell us about why she chose Sure, that? yeah. So yeah. Maya, the name of the um, girl in the book, is a nod to Maya Angelou, who's a writer that we both um, really love. And um, the girl is quintessentially a four-year-old, five-year-old child who asks a lot of questions, and the grandmother so lovingly responds and um, listens to her. So we just wanted to show that relationship. Well, and clearly it's a, a, a nod to your relationship for yeah. sure yeah. As, as well. Absolutely. And I, I see you have so many lovely supportive comments coming in on our feed. Um, people yeah. are very inspired and congratulating you on this beautiful piece of work that you two have created. Um, and again, we will have the link posted so that you can download the book and everyone can get a chance to read it and share it with the people in their lives. So, you know, ladies, I would be remiss not having the two of you here and not talking a little bit about, you know, where we are today, especially, you know, from where you have come from, Theodora. Um, a couple questions come to mind for me. You know, one is for you, Tori. I mean, you're working in preschool education and that's what you're doing your studies in. And there's been so many conversations about systemic racism. Um, and uh, specifically about law enforcement. Um, but we know there's systemic racism in so many of our systems and one of them obviously is in um, our education system in an access to child care as well you know what are some thoughts you have on um you know dismantling and addressing systemic racism in the area that you're working and how you know your studies right now too yes um so i think it's so important to start at a young age i know some people think that kids are too young to learn about some of the um, injustices that happen in this country and in this world. But I think that pretty much anything can be brought to a developmentally appropriate level for a child. Um, for example, uh, the past couple weeks in school, I've been reading books about um, marching and about being an ally and teaching the kids those words. And they really connect with it. They think about a time they stuck up for their brother or mm -hmm. that they, you know, helped in their community. And so I think starting at that age and introducing books that um, have characters that look like them and look like other people in the world um, is an important first step. As a teacher, I know that you can't start too early. And the earlier that you do begin, the more uh, success we had in having people learning to live together. We are so appreciative that we're speaking about this on Juneteenth. And why today is certainly a day to celebrate. Uh, it is also uh, terrible, but some unfortunate incidents, as we all know, of the brutal killings that are occurring in our country. Those must stop. And we start that, I think, by beginning to develop uh, the minds of young people to learn to live together, to appreciate one another, regardless of the color of that ethnic background. And earlier this week, we spoke with Mary Ann Murphy, um, Theodora, who um, uh, I know together, you both have for many years had the commitment to your program and project teens talk about racism. And, you know, clearly that's where it's rooted in. It's rooted in getting youth talking about you know, these issues and, you know, how to combat them. Yes. It is so important that we have these conversations because just look at why we celebrate Juneteenth. It was a lack of communication, really, that made Juneteenth stand out even more so, so that we must begin to talk. I would like to say for those of, of, who had not heard of Juneteenth, Bergen County, here in Bergen County, 
we have been celebrating Juneteenth with quite an elaborate uh, celebration in the county parks for almost 10 years now. Not yeah. early enough, and perhaps not enough, but it was an opportunity for us to tell the story and to grow and to develop and to appreciate one another. This is truly our history and how history must be told. Well, and I want to share for everyone, and I, I've, you know, had the honor of being at so many over the last decade of the the, count, the county Juneteenth celebrations that Theodora and the committee um, have created. And for those of you watching, please join us tomorrow. The YWCA on this platform will be hosting the uh, Martin Luther King Birthday Committee's Juneteenth celebration that we've, that uh, um, Theodora just mentioned um, that has been happening for a decade. Uh, obviously, because of the pandemic, this was going to be the first year that it wasn't going to happen. But we felt very strongly that this is a very important year <laughs> for it to happen. So we will be hosting it live here tomorrow. You just have to um, tune in at 10 a.m. to the YWCA Facebook page and it will be broadcast here. And there's quite a wonderful celebration plan. So we do hope that you join us. And we are most appreciative of the why joining with us and giving us the opportunity to continue the celebration. Well, I, I can't imagine, you know, I, I can't, I, I couldn't imagine it not happening. And I I know Barbara Giarmo, who's very active on the committee, and I know a close <laughs> friend of yours. Um, yeah. And I actually, I had reached out to her before, you know, the um, George Floyd murder happened and said, I heard that this was being, you know, put off this year and we really should use this platform. And I, I have to say, I was so glad that we were able to make that happen because I, I think it's so important. So could you share with us your thoughts on why this is so important, especially this year? Um, you know, what, what, why, or is the message different this year with, you know, everything that's happening around us? Yeah, I think that um, people are really tuned in in this moment and wanting to learn and wanting to listen in a way that um, maybe they haven't before. And so I think now is a really important time to be sharing with children and with adults um, the importance of diversity. Um, and so, yeah, I think that the, the timing, although it's unfortunate that um, the deaths of so many have had to happen in order for people to really pay attention, I think that the book comes out at a time that is important. This is truly a bittersweet time. It's certainly must know our history because if we don't, we doom to repeat it. And so with learning our history and coming together with people of all backgrounds, it helps us to make this world a better place. And so that it is more important now than ever that we pause and that we listen and that we learn and that we act. Well, I, I just have one more question I want to ask you, and then I will um, let you ladies go. But I, you know, I, I know, Theodora, that you were there for the civil rights marches and protests with standing with Dr. King. Um, and now as you're watching what's happening today, um, you know, what is your thought about those two times and looking at them side by side? I'm, I'm often reminded of a question that was asked by a late husband. What would the world be like if Dr. King was alive today? And his response was, what would the world be like if he had not lived? He taught us a lot. And even though that was a beginning, the, pro the protest, the peaceful protest that he initiated in helping and trying to up to rid ourselves of rid our country of all the problems that we encounter was really the beginning of what we're seeing today. What is different, I think, today is that young people in all walks of life are mm. beginning to say no more, that we can no longer allow this sin, uh, systematic racism to continue to plague our country. And so that it is different, but it's because of the history, because of the daring, because of the opportunities that Dr. King took to have us stand up and speak out that we're able to move forward today. And though I have 
always uh, uh, involved and appreciative of protests, we are now beginning to take it to places that matter. We must legislate all of those things that we can. I'm from TNEC, of course, and TNEC likes to brag about being the first in so many ways. In 1949, the model USA uh, town, and in 65, integrating the schools with Optimism. I am hoping that TNEC will now be the first in demonstrating to the world what a diverse community can look like, what policing is all about. So I, while I have sometimes some despair, I am quite hopeful. Well, that's wonderful to hear. And I know that, um, you know, we encourage everyone and I, I everyone who's protest, protesting, I keep saying you need to keep marching right to the polls Yes. Um, in November. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so many important elections, not just our presidential election, many of them along the way. And make sure you're filling out your census forms, making sure you're being counted. Um, you know, these are all ways that we can be having an impact for sure. And also, and especially on this great day, make sure that you reach out to um, our lawmakers and say that we want the Juneteenth to be a federal holiday. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So ladies, I just want to thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I'm so grateful. And I can, again, can tell from the comments from our viewers that, um, you know, we've all felt that this was a real gift to be able to hear about this wonderful work that you two have created. Um, I encourage everyone. I know one of the questions was, and uh, thanks to Samantha Platino who answered it for us. The, the book is called The Grocery Game. It can be downloaded. We have the link in um, this uh, broadcast so that you can download the book. It is free download right now. I encourage you to read it to your children. My seven-year-old twins will absolutely um, be yeah. having it as regular in their routine <laughs> reading for sure. Um, yeah. But we encourage you and we encourage you two ladies to keep writing. Yeah. Um, I know you're busy with, with graduate school, yeah. but um, I know there's plenty more stories in there. And um, we look forward to hearing them. And uh, thank you, know, you so much for having you. this conversation with us. Of course, thank you both. And for all of you watching, we wish you a wonderful weekend. We do encourage you to join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. where we'll be celebrating, uh, further celebrating the Juneteenth. As we know, today is the Juneteenth, but we will be celebrating it with the Martin Luther King Birthday Planning Committee tomorrow. And again, they have been doing this celebration for a decade. and. Um, I guarantee you it will be um, moving and important um, time for you to spend. And if for some reason you can't watch it live at 10 a.m., um, same with this, if you're watching this and want other people in your life to hear about Theodora and Tori's wonderful story, um, these feeds can be shared at any time, be watched anytime. They live on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel and they'll be posted on our websites. And we do encourage you to share them and watch. Um, but we hope to see you tomorrow for our Juneteenth celebration. And we also hope that you can join us next week where we have wonderful, um, also a whole series of wonderful programs for you, including, I understand we'll be ending the week with um, our Secretary of State Tahisha Way talking about voting. That's obviously so, so important right now and um, all the new ways and different ways that we can do it now. Um, in this day that we are living in. So with that, folks, have a wonderful, safe, healthy weekend. Take time for yourselves and please join us for the Juneteenth celebration tomorrow. And ladies, thank you so much. Thank for your you time. so much. Be well all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.